Hey everybody. So last episode I talked about the music of Kevin McLeod and how it's become a staple of internet culture in the past 20 or so years. But while we're on that topic, why don't I talk about something that's been around on the internet for even longer and has been used by pretty much every internet user to ever exist, even if most of them don't know about it. What do I mean? Well, your web browser sends a lot of info to whatever page you happen to be visiting on the internet, and a good portion of it is stuff you'd probably never even know about unless you were looking for it. To do basically anything on the internet, your browser has to send an HTTP request, and this request contains things called headers, which basically tell the web server everything it needs to know about you, your browser, and your activity before your request even gets processed. It's sort of your browser's way of introducing itself to the server, but what if I told you there's something your browser sends to every Every single website you'll ever visit that's pretty much been a universal phrase sent by virtually every browser for the past 30 years. In this particularly short mini episode to go up as I work on a much longer one, let's talk about that. So what is this mysterious message? Well, it resides in one particular browser header called the user agent string. This string is what the browser uses to tell a server who it is. Much of the information is pretty self-explanatory, but one particular section at the very beginning might catch you off guard. Mozilla 5.0. Some of you may recognize Mozilla as the group behind Firefox and other projects, but this string isn't unique to any of their products. Alongside any Firefox-based browser, it can be found in Chrome, Safari, Opera, Edge, whatever you use, it's gonna have this string, no matter how far back you go or what browser you switch to. And to understand this, we have to explain the browser wars. Now, the very first browser to make it big in the very early days of the internet was NCSA's Mosaic. First released in 1993, well, it definitely was a browser, that's for sure, it could browse. But it remained at the top of the food chain primarily just because it didn't really have any competition. That would change in 1994, when a team of developers calling themselves Netscape Communications Corporation released the first version of Netscape Navigator, Mosaic's first real competitor. The following year, Netscape Navigator would beat out Mosaic's market shares and become the new king of browsers. But it too would soon gain a competitor in the form of Microsoft's Internet Explorer. In order to keep ahead of the curve, Netscape would consistently introduce new features that in many ways revolutionized the web. Although almost completely phased out now, one of Netscape's most popular contributions was the concept of web frames, which allowed multiple HTML documents to be rendered onto a page at the same time. But at the time, only Netscape supported it. If a web server tried to respond with a page that contained frames to Mosaic or early versions of Internet Explorer, the browser wouldn't know what to do with it. So they had to improvise. Many popular sites around that time adopted a technique called user agent sniffing. Yes, that's actually what it's called, to determine if the browser could support frames. Simply put, if the server detected that a Netscape browser was accessing their page, it would send back pages with frames, and if the browser was literally anything else, it would send back the old style version of that page. The way it determined this was very simple. During development, Netscape Navigator had gone by the code name Mozilla, a play on the phrase Mosaic Killer, which eventually became the company mascot and the name of a foundation born from the eventual ashes of Netscape. So, to find out if a Netscape browser was accessing their pages, all web servers had to do was use sniffing to find the substring Mozilla in the browser's user agent. It was quick, simple, straightforward, and it meant that Netscape got frames while Internet Explorer did not. But you see, Microsoft did not like this. Eager to catch up, the company quickly added support for frames to their browser, but this didn't really do anything. Since web pages had already adjusted to only allowing Netscape Navigator to access their full content, they would see Internet Explorer in the user agent header and send back the old web page regardless of whether or not the browser could actually interpret frames. Microsoft could have potentially just waited for sites to adapt to the change, but they didn't have time, so they went with a more straightforward solution. They slapped the words Mozilla compatible into their user agent strings, essentially telling web servers that they weren't Netscape but could still do Netscape things. And that was good enough. Browsers detected Mozilla and sent back frames. But since webmasters never had to change their user agent sniffing protocol, they never did. Sites continued to only send certain features to browsers with Mozilla in their headers. And so every browser developed after this point had to have that feature as well. 
Eventually, they dropped the compatible part entirely, just opening the string with Mozilla 5.0 and following it with whatever the browser actually was. What was originally just a quick fix eventually became the standard, as the web developed around it, and by the turn of the millennium it was unusual to find a browser that didn't have Mozilla in their headers, despite the fact that Netscape itself had been beaten out by Internet Explorer in the late 90s thanks to it being bundled with Windows, and the Netscape communications company would go under just a few years later. But the Mozilla header remained. This actually sorta happened again a few times, like when the Linux-based Conqueror browser gained access to content meant for Mozilla's Gecko rendering engine by shoving the phrase khtml like Gecko into their user agent header, and when Chrome started just putting a second browser identifier in their user agent string because they wanted Safari-compatible features, along with a few similar incidents. As a result of this, the user agent header, which once simply stated the identity of the browser and operating system, now contains a mountain of random extraneous junk that's mostly just your browser pretending to be other browsers in order to get things that it wasn't originally meant to get. Mozilla 5.0 is, of course, the most universal of these, despite the fact that it's almost meaningless today, since frames and other such features were almost entirely phased out close to 20 years ago. But it remains, alongside a spattering of other equally obtuse user agent substrings, as a sort of living monument to the changes the web has gone through and the undying universal impatience of web developers. Thank you guys for watching. I linked a fun article on this in the description if you want to learn more. And I promise there's a bigger video coming soon. Thanks for watching.